Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, so let's have a look at the basic elements of an IoT application. Mainly, what does an IoT application consist of? Um, the first thing is the actual things, the actual objects. In our case, these are microcontrollers uh, that is connected to sensors and actuators so the first basic element of an IoT application is the objects that are equipped with sensors that gather information equipped with sensors that gather data which will be transferred over a network and actuators that allow the things to act so in simple terms the things they are connectable objects in our case they are microcontrollers that are connected to two things the first thing are the sensor these are the devices that gather information for example a sensor to measure the temperature level the the temp for example sensor that can measure temperature and um, actuators things that can make an action for example it can switch on and off a light it can switch on and off a signal etc and the sensors the sensors are not in all cases physically attached to the things for example you can have a microcontroller in one place and a sensor in another place that measures temperature they are connected either wireless or wired or through wires um, a very simple thing is the microcontroller this microcontroller is connected to this sensor this sensor uh, measures the temperature and sends a signal to the microcontroller through some calculations the microcontroller can calculate the signal and make a dashboard for the user so that the user can access the dashboard and see the current um, signal so this is a very basic example of a thing the second thing is the gateways so what do the gateways what does the gateways do through the gateways data goes from things to the cloud and vice versa the gateways enables data pre-processing and filtering before moving it to the cloud to reduce the volume of data for detailed processing and storing and transmits control commands coming from the cloud to the things so what do the gateways do mainly is that it forms it does two things and the first thing it it filters and pre-processes the data to reduce the volume of data that is sent to the cloud so we only want to send meaningful data we don't want any noise in the data we don't want any nonsense basically or any value that might not benefit us uh, along the way and the second thing is that it's mainly a gateway it's mainly um <laughs> it's mainly a passage for the data from the things to the cloud so then things can execute commands using their actuators so these commands come from the gateway to the things then there is cloud gateways so cloud gateways is a gateways in the cloud they facilitate data compression and secure data transmission between the field gateways and the cloud iot servers it also ensures capability with various protocols and communicates with field gateways using different protocols depending on what protocol is supported by the gateways so it ensures capability between various protocols this is what we mentioned in the last lecture as um, the bus layer and the event processing layer um, it mainly ensures capability with various protocols so it can receive data from various protocols and communicate with the field gateways that we mentioned earlier using a different set of protocols moving on on the cloud there is big data warehouses all this data is aggregated and collected in something called big data warehouse where it is filtered and pre-processed so there is filtering a pre-processing data for um, the incoming data to have meaningful insights and big data warehouses contain also cleaned and structured and matched data the data in the warehouses store context information about things and sensors so for example a certain temperature level or a temperature value um, might might be sent along with the type of device that sent it uh, the name or the idea of device that sent it a timestamp full timestamp like it's the time one did this device send this information etc so um, big data warehouses not only contain values that are meaningful but also uh, much more information relevant to the thing and the environment um, along with the needed data 
Then there is data analytics. So upon large amount of data, we can analyze the data and then use this data to find trends, to find um, behavior patterns, and to gain actionable insights. For example, the performance of devices help identify inefficiencies and work out the ways to improve an IoT system, making it more reliable and more customer oriented. As we will see much uh, later, and um, these a huge amount of data can um, show us a lot about the behavior of the user, the behavior of the device itself. For example, we can manage and we can control how does the device react to the user's behavior. If the user behaves in a certain way, the device can act in a much more convenient way to him. So we can custom tailor or um, make the experience of the user with the device much more better according to each user or to each device. Then we might we like then we might add machine learning to it and the machine learning model and the models that machine learning generates. With machine learning there is an opportunity to create more precise and more efficient models for control applications. Models are regularly updated, for example once in a week or once in a month, based on the historical data accumulated in big data warehouses. So why do we use machine learning? Because machine learning um, is, is an algorithm that uses data. It doesn't use rules. It's not rule based. So uh, if I want to make a device much more smarter, but I don't have to like say, if the user do this, do that. If the user do this, do that. I don't have to do all of these um, rules because simply um, the possibilities are endless. I can, I can make a machine learning algorithm and feed the machine learning algorithm a lot of data so that the algorithm can learn what to do in which situation or in which context. So the machine learning is much more uh, complex, of course, but it's much more beneficial for um, the developers and for the user if the application um, requires machine learning. So um, then we have control applications. Control applications, they send automatic commands and alerts to the actuators and don't... Um, so keep in mind that control applications are very different from user application user application these are applications that the users use to control and uh, to control the devices control the actuators and see the results and see the information and data while the control applications are the applications that um, that the cloud uses with the device so the cloud may uh, tell a certain device to switch on a certain appliance or switch off a certain appliance etc so the control applications are kind of um, back-end applications. They are applications that are used within the operation of the device. But the user application is the application that the user uses to control the devices, to see all the beneficial. Okay, so a little bit of a recap. Um, we are looking, we are basically studying the basic elements of an IT application. So we had a look at the things, the sensors, gateways, cloud gateways, big data warehouses, data analytics and machine learning models, control applications and user applications. Then we are going to study the device management. So in any IT application, each device must be managed. That means it needs to identify, it needs identification basically. So the server needs to identify each and every device what does each device uh, do, whether it's doing its operation or not? Uh, what's its ID, for example? What's its timestamp? Where does it uh, operate, etc.? We need to configure and control each device. We need to configure and control each device, monitor the performance and the output of each device, and we need to update the and update and maintain the software remotely over the air so it's it's called firmware over the air where the firmware or the software of the device basically um, gets updated and maintained through the internet then we have the user management because we're making um, devices for the user so each user many applications include sometime some type of user permissions 
So we need to identify users. We need to identify their roles, their access levels, and the ownership in the system. It includes such options as adding and removing users, managing user settings, controlling access of various users to certain information, as well as the permission to perform certain operation. So the user management is much more um, needed in type of applications where, for example, you're controlling um, uh, some kind of settings in a home, each user has some kind of setting, um, etc. Each user has some kind of permissions and all that stuff. Then there is security monitoring. Security is one of the top concerns in the Internet of Things. Connected things produce huge volumes of data, which need to be securely transmitted and protected from cyber criminals. Logging and analysis of data. We also need to log and analyze the data, and we need to secure the data. This security needs to be implemented in various ways, and the security of an IoT device or security in IoT in general is a very wide topic uh, where there is a lot of research, a lot of tools, and certainly a lot of vulnerabilities, so it's, um, it's much more complex. Let us have a look at an example of all of these basic elements like for example an intelligent lighting system so an intelligent lighting system that may um, have smart lamps they may use actuators to control some garage door for example um, a mobile application a machine learning model a big data warehouse data lake so we're gonna look at this example and try to identify the basic elements that we have um, talked about Let's uh, look at the basic components. Sensors, in this case, they take data from the environment, for example, daylight, sounds, people's movement. Lamps are also equipped with actuators to switch the light on and off. So we have sensors and we have actuators, and those are the things that we mentioned before. Big data warehouses, they are used. They contain the sensor data in various days of the week and energy costs are more. And data, big data warehouses is really these raw data. So the sensors, they gather information. They include, for example, people's movement, sounds, energy, uh, temperature, noise, uh, all that stuff. They are sent to, as raw data, they are sent to the data lake, which is being sent to the big data warehouse. Then we have monit manual monitoring and control. Why should we have that? Because the users need to control the smart lighting system with either a mobile app or a web app, for example, or all of that stuff. Um, with the app, users can see which lights are on and off and send commands to the control application that further transmit them to lamp actuators. Then we have data analytics because all of these raw data material, raw data, they are being sent to the data lake to the data center. So we need to analyze the way users apply smart lighting. Their schedules, either provided by the user or identified by the smart system, and other info gathered with the sensors. Data analysts can make and update algorithms for the control applications. And all of this analysis goes into the machine learning algorithm. Intelligent lighting can apply models generated by machine learning. For example, to recognize the patterns of a smart homeowner behavior, like he is leaving at 8 a.m. and coming back at 7 p.m. And accordingly, adjust the time when the lights are switched on and off. For example, switch the lamp on five minutes before they will be needed. So this is a very basic example of a machine learning model where it is being fed a lot of data from the user and then it can make a smart guess on what is the user is currently doing what does he need right now does he need the lights on does he need the lights off etc and this wraps up the basic elements of an iot system or an it application uh, i hope that um, in terms of concepts in terms of ideas that each concept that we've talked about is understood is clear um, Later on the course, in the coming sessions, we're going to study each um, element that we've talked about. We're going to study the microcontrollers, we're going to study the sensors, 
Uh, what are the communication protocols? How could I write code for the microcontroller? How could I control a certain actuator? Um, what are the cloud services? How can I make a dashboard to view the raw data? The raw data. All of that stuff is going to be um, covered in the coming lectures. As for now, we need to learn the basic um, concepts, the basic facts. So I hope that the basic facts are understood. If you're not sure how does each um, thing is being um, executed, um, don't worry about that. We're going to look at that much more later in the course. As for now, just worry about the concepts. What does each part do? I hope that that was um, beneficial. If you have any questions, feel free to add them. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.